The snow profiles are an uh, are important um, element of what we do when we're in the mountains uh, as forecasters, but actually in terms of um, compiling our avalanche hazard forecast, this probably gives us about 10% to 15% of the information. Most of the information that we, we gather um, in terms of compiling the avalanche hazard report comes from travelling comes from looking at snowpack, uh, the snow distribution, where the, how the, the um, stability varies from one aspect to another. So the snow profile um, really is just a sample of the snowpack that is taken in where we think is the worst place. So we go to a place that represents the worst place in the mountains. So that may be from um, the weather forecast where that, was, that, that indicated overnight that there was new snow um, snow accumulation so we go there or it may be that we go to a place that we've been monitoring um, for uh, maybe a few days or a few weeks and we want to see how a layer is behaving. So really um, probably the most useful piece of information anyone can get when they look at the snow profile is the temperature gradient and uh, the red line which indicates how the snow is going to develop so it'll it'll give an indication of whether the snowpack is going to improve become stable more stable or whether it's going to get weaker or remain weak and the temperature line which you get in the graph is is the most um, relevant piece of information you can get in the snow profile in terms of the other layers it varies so much around a landscape that this is just a little tiny sample and it may be that a, many, a couple of meters away from this we could have a completely different profile in terms of snowpack, in terms of layers and how those layers behave with one another. But what is generally quite consistent and fairly common uh, with all the snow profiles is the temperature gradient. So the temperature gradient is something that is a very useful piece of information.